One of the most common questions I get is how long does it take for an epoxy floor to dry? This is what I'm going to talk about today and when I say dry I actually mean curing but because many people use the word drying I'm going to be using both terms in this presentation. So how long does it take for a floor to dry? And uh, please note I'm going to talk in general here every epoxy flooring company that produces products they have their own varieties of products and every manufacturer might use a different hardener or a different type of resin and those will affect the, the curing times but I'm going to give a general picture in this presentation. Now important terms we need to be aware of before we go on and these are pot life, working time, recoat time, walk on time and fully cured time and I'll explain what I mean by each one. The pot life. The pot life is well, what happens is we mix the A and the B component, we mix the product with the mixer, and from that point we have a de an amount of time we can use, the, the, the product can be used in the pot before it starts to heat up and gets all chewy. It's usually about half an hour, 45 minutes, depending on the product you're using. Some fast curing products might be like 20 minutes, but that is the pot life. How long the product, after it's been mixed, can stay in the pot. Working time. The working time is similar to the pot life. It's a bit longer usually. So if let's say you have a pot life of half an hour, the working time is about 45 minutes. And the main difference here is this is the actual time after you've mixed the product and you actually pour it on the floor like one of my staff team, one of my members of my team is doing here. Then you need to, you have some time to spread it out with a roll, spread it out with a trowel or a squeegee, use a spike roller maybe, or whatever you're doing with the, with the floor. So the working time is similar in the sense that you do not have unlimited time. You have a few more minutes, maybe 45 minutes, maybe one hour to actually make sure the product's been spread properly and you can move on. The recoat time. The recoat time is you applied your first base coat or maybe your primer and then you go back and you want to recoat. Um, this is obviously much much longer. It's you need to be able to walk on the floor and it's without getting like your feet stuck on it. So recoat times are usually like 16 hours, 24 hours in this example here. Um, keep in mind you also don't want the recoat time to be too big. Most epoxy product products have a window where it's desirable to apply it so you don't want it to be too short. You don't want the floor to be still be wet but you also don't want the floor to be already like seven days cured. That could also affect the final, the final surface. So you want to go for the, the recoat time. Then we've got the walk on time, which is similar to recoat time. The main difference here is you finish the floor and you can actually walk on it. You cannot really apply any heavy weights to it. You shouldn't use any heavy wear and tear on it, but it's just, a, it's good enough to walk on. In this example here, we'd finish the floor, a white self-leveling floor, and one of my team members is just making sure, removing the uh, masking tape from the edges. The, this is usually, you can walk on the floor 24, 36 hours after you've applied it. Again, many factors will um, affect how quickly it will cure. I'm going to talk about that in a minute, so just stay posted and I'll tell you in a minute what are the factors that affect the walk-on time. And finally, we have the fully cured time. Usually in epoxies, we say fully cured is seven days or uh, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, which is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Fully cured means you can put cars and pallet trucks and pallets and whatever you want to put on the floor. Um, usually, I mean, we say seven days, but you can say that after two to three days, the floor has already reached 90% of its technical capabilities. So you're usually good to go after two or three days. But if it's a brand new project, I strongly recommend you just leave it for seven days. So whoever's going to move into this floor is going to get a fully cured floor. Important point that if you try speeding up the curing time, so if you want the floor to be cured faster than like 24 or 36 hours, you also need to cure, speed up the working life and the pot life. Some companies claim you can work with their product for one hour, but it still dries really quickly. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really buy that. My experience is it, the faster you want the final, the final floor to be ready, you're going to have to deal with a faster curing product in the pot, um, which means you also need a more experienced staff. I'm going to talk about that too. 
And as I said here, epoxy needs seven days to be fully cured, although I find that at 90% is achieved in the first two days, providing we have standard temperatures and standard conditions. And the next thing I want to talk about is when I take on a project like a, a small or medium-sized project, maybe 200 square meters or 500 square meters. Now, 500 square meters is about 5,000 square feet if uh, you use um, feet instead of meters. But I usually tell the customer, we need about a week to do this floor. So I include in this week surface prep, some priming, all the intermediate coats, and then leave some a few days at the end for the product for the for the floor to cure properly so they can use it again and in most cases it's from a monday to a monday uh, that's what i usually work out with customers but some days if if you were dealing with a floor that's really in a bad shape you might need more than a week or if you're dealing with a really big floor you may have to sort of separate the work in several parts again these are up to you but as a general rule, if you're working for a, a floor that requires a full sort of surface prep and priming and all these phases, a week is a proper time frame for a medium-sized project. Now, I'm going to post two links below for two videos. And this is because warm weather and cold weather affect the curing. Warm weather speeds up the process. Everything is faster with warm weather. In fact, sometimes it's too fast. We experienced this this year during a heat wave um, in, in July. Um, and with cold weather, everything's really slow and it can also affect your final result. For both cases, I have posted videos below. Take a look at them because I think they're very useful, especially if you are affected by warm weather or cold weather and how this can affect your final result. So I'm saying here like you need seven days for a floor to be fully cured or you can walk on it in 24 hours. If you're dealing with really cold weather, you might need three days just to be able to walk on it. That's what I mean. So keep that in mind. Well, now that I gave you an idea of curing times, how can we speed up curing? The first way you can cure, speed up curing is you, you can opt to use epoxy products with faster curing hardeners. One of the key factors that affects your epoxy coating, the one you get from your supplier, it's the hardener and some hardeners have accelerators so they kind of they tend to cure faster now not all manufacturers will give you that much information unfortunately but in general if you if fast curing is an issue for you you want to be using products that have faster curing hardeners don't forget what i said though a faster curing hardener also means it will cure faster in the pot and I've had that problem with some customers where I give them my product and they complain that it, they want a fast curing product, but then they complain that it, it was it heated up in the pot really quickly and it did not have enough time to apply, apply it. So that's also an area that needs consideration. The next way to speed up your curing is to warm up the area. So if you have some way of heating up the room, especially if it's winter time, if you have air conditioners or heaters, warming up the area will help accelerate the, the the curing phase especially in the winter however please do not use propane propane heaters they tend to create all sorts of problems the fumes tend to go on the epoxy and then they leave marks in the epoxy so i strongly advise do not use propane heaters and now the final point i want to say is if you really need to work fast there are other products on the market that cure much faster than epoxy. These are polyaspartics, MMAs, uh, some types of polyurethanes are very fast curing. So you may want to explore those products. If you have customers that want a really fast curing product, um, you may want to explore these products as well. And I'm going to talk about more about that in a second. And I'm going to show you here a picture. This is a team that's working fast. So everyone here has our designated role. Um, this was a we we had to complete this project in a short period of time and we were working with a fast curing epoxy product so notice everyone has a role because if you pour the product and no one starts back rolling it well then it will start curing really quickly so you want to be moving fast you want people preparing the product and the rest of the team kind of following behind spreading out the epoxy and back rolling the epoxy and i want to emphasize this that you need experienced professionals 
to work with fast products and 48 hour turnover projects. Because I told you before, it takes a week for a proper project. Now, I do sometimes have customers that want to be able to use our floor again in 24 or 48 hours. I will do it for very select customers, for very select situations where I trust my product and I also know that the specific floor I'm working with can be done. Even today, as I record this, it's a Saturday I'm recording this, last night and Friday night we moved into a customer, we did the primer, we came in Saturday morning, we applied the top coat and we're going to let it to cure for 48 hours and on Monday morning that warehouse is going to be in full operation. Um, again, you can do it if you have the right products and the right staff that's experienced to do it and also that the floor does not require too much preparation. But again, this is for experienced professionals only. And now I want to talk about one more thing that, as I said before, polyaspartics are a new generation of products that are very are cure much faster than epoxies. So this is something I've been working on a lot. I've been doing my research and my company will be having a polyaspartic product early in 2022. We've done our small tests. We're very satisfied with our tests. We are, will be rolling out the product at the start of 2022. So I will be posting more links and more information on that soon. Um, just to give an idea, polyaspartics, you can basically do a project in 12 to 24 hours and hand it over to the customer including the need to do any priming in advance. They are UV resistant, so they can be used outdoors and indoors. They are better at scratch resistance, and they tend to be easier to clean, but more information on that later. So polyaspartics are a good option, but keep in mind what I said before. They are fast curing, but they're also very fast curing in the pot. So you need experienced people to apply these products. Anyway, please take a moment if you haven't already and subscribe to this channel. It helps me keeping bringing out new videos. You may also want to check out our newly relaunched online course. It was relaunched in 2021. Lots of people are joining every week and it's great to have you on and people are learning lots of stuff. So if you want to improve your epoxy knowledge, definitely join our course. And I'm going to post a few more videos that you can have a look at. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget, if someone can benefit, please share this video to someone else.